Let us pray. Father, open our hearts and minds to your word. You know the storms and winds that we are facing in our lives. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us. We all need your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me come a little closer to you all. Dear friends, we have been meditating on... Do you remember the theme? Meditating on a call to run the Christian race. And today's topic is enduring the wind. Enduring the wind. We must understand that running the Christian race is not easy. We all know that there is a wind going on in Gujarat. There is a wind, there is a storm. In some parts of our country, even in our lives, in our lives. Sometimes we all face winds, sometimes whirlwinds, sometimes tsunamis. Sometimes cyclone. We all face in our lives. And let me ask all of us this morning. What kind of wind blowing in your life? What kind of wind blowing in your family? What kind of wind blowing in your marriage? What kind of wind blowing in your business? What kind of wind blowing in your workplace? What kind of wind blowing right now? Winds of change, winds of sickness, winds of conflict, winds of trouble, winds of opposition. There are so many winds. We must understand that these winds are uncontrollable. These winds are uncontrollable. That's the reason we have chosen this topic, Enduring the Wind. Dear friends, how can we face things that are uncontrollable in our lives? How can we face? The Bible says that, endure and withstand. Endure and withstand. I don't know what wind you are facing right now. I don't know. But you know it and God knows. How can you endure and remain undamaged by the destructive winds? Let me quickly share with you, it's already 10.45. I'll try to finish it before 11.15, 30 minutes. Listen to me. Be attentive this morning. Don't allow your mind to waver anywhere. It is always a temptation for us to let our minds waver, let our thoughts waver. Lord, this is what I'm facing in my life. This is what I'm facing in my family. This is what I'm facing in my relationship. This is what I'm facing in my workplace. Lord, I need your word. I need your word, Lord. Number one, how can we face, endure, and remain undamaged by the destructive winds? Number one, put God's word Shall we all read it together? Put God's word into practice when the wind beats you. Now turn to the person sitting next to you and say, put God's word into practice. Put God's word. Put God's word. Mezzanine floor. Wonderful. Church is back today. If no one else is there, you know, you can tell me also. Put God's word into practice when the wind when the wind beats you let us come back to the text shall we turn our bibles to matthew chapter 7 verses 24 and 25 shall we all read it together it's on the screen also shall we all read it slowly let us understand you're talking about the wind shall we all read therefore Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, 
yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Now, notice, when storms come, there are three things happen. Listen to me. Children, young people, listen to me. Can you project the words, uh, Deepa? When storms come, the next verse. Notice there are three things happen. First, what comes? What comes? Children, yeah. Rain comes. First thing, it attacks the roof of your life. Rain comes. And then it says, streams rise from the ground. It attacks the foundation of your life. And then, and then, the winds blow and beat against the house, which means all sides now attacked. Here you get it from top, get it from bottom, and side. Is this your situation this morning? Rain comes down, your wind attacks the roof of your life, the foundation of your life, and all sides. We all go through such situation. Dear friends, what do we do with things that are uncontrollable? Think of what has happened in Gujarat, cyclone, uncontrollable, tsunami, uncontrollable. What do we do with things that are uncontrollable? You are going through a situation this morning. You are sitting here. The Lord is speaking to you. You are facing a situation that is uncontrollable. You know it. God knows it. Nobody knows. And you are here. And God has brought you. That is uncontrollable. You are struggling. You are trying hard. But nothing is working. Uncontrollable. You are stuck now. Top, bottom, all sides attacked. What we need to do with things that are uncontrollable, what God says, verse 24, therefore, therefore, shall we all look at God, what Jesus said? Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine. And, dear friends, what we need to do with things that are uncontrollable in our lives, we need to put God's word into practice. Hallelujah. In other words, listen to me, children, young people, I'm talking to you this morning. Young couples, I am talking to you. Your house must be built on the foundation, on the rock. Your house must be built on the foundation, on the rock. What is the rock here? What is the rock here? The Bible. The word of God. Anyone hears my words and puts them into practice. Dear brothers and sisters, this is the only way. This is the only way. When you are going through a situation that is uncontrollable, the only way you can make it through your win is by putting the word of God into practice. Putting the word of God into practice, that is the only way. 
You can endure and withstand your win. Nothing can happen. Dear brothers and sisters, the more you build your life on the word of God, the more you will become stronger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The more you build your marriage on the word of God, the more your marriage will become stronger. This is the only way. I have learned that. There is no other way. The more you build your faith, the more you build your faith on the word of God, the more your faith will become stronger. There is no other way. These are not the words of Pastor Paul Rayapa. These are the words of Jesus. The more you build your family on the word of God, the more your family will be united and will be stronger. Fathers, this is my appeal to all fathers and mothers on this Father's Day. The more we build our children on the word of God, the more our children will be stronger in the Lord. Fathers and mothers, do you know what your children are going through? The storms that they are facing in their college, in their school, concerning their career, their future. Let us make a commitment, all fathers and mothers, on this special day. Lord, I will build my children on the word of God so that I know that my son, my daughter will be more stronger in the Lord to face any storm, any wind. The blessing, listen to me, the blessing does not come from just knowing the word of God. The strength does not come from just knowing or just reading. Listening is good. Reading is good. Meditating, wonderful. But here Jesus says, if you need my blessing, you need to apply. The blessing comes from only applying the word of God. Practicing the word of God. Practicing the word of God. Dear friends, and then Jesus says, listen to me carefully. There is a wind blowing in your life, I know it. There is a wind blowing in your family. There is a wind blowing concerning your career. The Lord is speaking to you. The Lord says, my son, my daughter, just put my word into practice. Put my word into practice. And then he says, if you don't, apply my word if you don't use my word your house will crash the second part very simple the teachings of jesus very simple i never complicate the message of the gospel i never complicate i speak straight what the holy spirit tells i speak Jesus says, very simple, if you don't practice, I want to bless your home. I want to bless your marriage. I want to bless your daughter. I want to bless your son. I want to bless your business. I want to bless your work. I want to bless. Put my word into practice so that no matter what wind comes, you will be able to withstand. But he says, dear friends, if you don't, Apply the word of God in your wind. Your family will crash. Your marriage will crash. Your faith will crash. Are you struggling in your faith? Simple reason. You are not applying the word of God. Is that a wind in your marriage? Simple reason. You are not applying the word of God. You are applying the words of man. You are applying the voice of the world. Let us come back to the word of God. 
Everything will collapse, my dear friend, when we don't use the word of God. There will be tsunamis, there will be storms, there will be whirlwind. Oh, I know that how to apply God's word in this wind situation. In this tsunami situation, I know, Lord, I have seen your mighty hand, Lord. This is the wind I'm facing right now in my family. This is the wind my daughter is facing, my son is facing, my family is going through. In my workplace, this is the wind. Lord, it is blowing. Lord, I'm going to trust your word. I'm going to apply your word. And you said in your word, do not fear, for I am with you. Trust me, you said, Lord. I'm going to be patient because you said, be still and know that I am God. Help me, Lord. Dear friends, how can you and I endure and remain undamaged by the destructive winds? Put God's word into practice. This is the only way. I'm sharing from the word of God. Marriage, apply the word of God. Children, apply the word of God. Your business, apply the word of God. Ministry, apply the word of God. Is there a wind? Is there a wind beating against you? Top, bottom, side. Lastly, number two. Put God's word into practice. Number two. Shall we all read it together? Turn your focus from the wind to Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number one, put God's word into, you remember, no? Hardly 15 minutes. Okay. Let me tell you something. Even as you are driving back, there will be a wind in the car, not outside, inside. Who are they? Husband and wife. There is a wind. Be quiet. Fathers, there is a wind. Now turn to the person sitting next to you and say, turn your foot. Please, please project. Shall we all, next one, next one. Shall we all tell? Turn your focus from the wind to Almighty God. Now, don't tell the other person. Tell your wife or husband, your son, your daughter, whoever is sitting next to you. Turn your focus from the wind to? Pastor, wind is always here. Tsunami is here only. But wind is opening my mouth. This is my situation, Pastor. In the very next chapter, the very next chapter, Matthew 8, before that, Hebrew chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrew chapter 12. Shall we all read it together? Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Okay, I want only children, all children, below fifty years. No, below 15 years to read as loud as you can this verse. Only children, here we go. Fixing, hello. I'm, I'm putting all my, like wind only I'm coming. Okay, children, mezzanine floor. Are you ready to read? Read the Bible, it's there on the screen. You can't say I don't have, my father doesn't have, you can't say that. Okay, now we are going to read. Children, only children below 15. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Jersha, come. I want you to come and read this word. Jersha, come. Such a wonderful daughter. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the only, cross. Only, only the Thank you, you ma'am. Shall we put our hands together? We love our children. We love our young people. And then, look at this storm and Jesus. Matthew, 
Can you please project the verses? Matthew chapter 8, verses 25 and 26. Shall we all read it together? Matthew chapter 8. Shall we all read? The disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us, we are going to drown. Verse 26, Jesus replied, you of little faith, you are so afraid. Then he got up and rebuked what? The winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. When something comes to you, conflict, crisis, trouble, when something comes to you which is uncontrollable, you need to turn your focus from the wind to how great God is. Amen? How great God is. You need to turn your focus from your problem to how great God is. If you are going through a situation which is out of control, out of control. Husband and wife, are you talking to each other? Think about it. Children, are you talking to your parents? Is there a wind out of control now? Not in your control. Not in your control. Listen to me. When something comes to you which you can't control, you need to remember that God is in control. Hallelujah. God is in control. You may be facing a situation this morning, sitting here, not in, control, in your control, maybe in your workplace. You may be facing a huge task. I want to encourage you. Remember that God is in control. Turn your focus. What is your wind? Listen to me. Tell your wind how great God is. Don't tell God how great is your wind. You got it? This is the problem. Sometimes we go to God and say, Lord, oh Lord, no, 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 no. Tell your wind. That, tell your storm. Tell your trouble. How great is your God? How powerful is your God? Don't tell God. He knows. Don't tell God. How big is your trouble? Tell your problem. Tell your storm. How great is your God? And you will experience the power of God. I always tell. Oh no. How great is my God whom I serve. Whom I trust. And that is a beautiful story here. That is a beautiful example. In Matthew chapter 8. The Bible says that there was a furious storm. Furious. Wow. Wow. Sometimes the storms that we face. Maybe one month. Going on and on. There was a furious storm. The Bible says that the waves swept over the boat. Now, children, what was Jesus doing in this storm? Hmm? Hmm. Don't sleep in the church. If you sleep here, there will be a storm. Never sleep in the church. God may send a storm. He knows how to wake us up. He was? Now, Jesus kept on sleeping. Do you think that he didn't know there was a furious storm? The Bible says the waves swept over the boat and he was sleeping. He was sleeping. The panicking disciple, Lord, 
God. Some of you got up now. Got up. Opa, storm. Lord! When there is a wind, sometimes we panic. Top, bottom, side, we begin to panic. You know what they said? Lord, we are going to rejoice. We are going to... Hello, do you know this story? Now all, you know, from bottom, top, you are all... Nothing will come, don't worry. <laughs> no tsunami will enter here. Dear friends, Lord, we are going to drown. We are going to die. We are going to die. Dear brothers and sisters, do you know why they were afraid? Do you know why you are afraid this morning, afraid of certain things? Do you know why you are discouraged, you are frustrated, you are depressed, you are angry? Do you know the reason? Learn from this story. It's not a fictional story. Learn from this story. The disciples completely forgot that Jesus was with them in the boat. This is our problem. This is our problem. You must always remember that. When you have Jesus with you in your life, when you have Jesus with you in your family, when you have Jesus with you in your marriage, when you have Jesus with you in your business, when you have Jesus with you in the ministry, when you have Jesus, the boat is unsinkable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The boat is unsinkable. Let us learn that. They completely forgot that Jesus was with them in the boat. Often why we get frustrated. Why we get depressed? Why are we afraid? We have completely forgotten that Jesus is with us. That's the reason we need to turn our focus from the wind to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. He says, hey guys, nonsense. I am with you. You have little faith. Some have no faith, at least they have little faith. The Bible says, he spoke to the wind. Everything became? Huh? Everything became? Calm. You want to experience that calmness in your own personal life. Are you experiencing calmness in your heart as you are listening? Is your mind here? Are you experiencing calmness in your home? Is your home experiencing calmness? Simple. Put God's word into practice. You will experience. Simple. Let us not focus on anything else. Let us turn our focus to God. Dear brothers and sisters, let the wind, children, I don't know what wind you are facing. Your parents may not know. Young people, your parents may not know the wind that you are facing. Let me encourage you. I love you all, young people and children. Let your wind drive you closer to Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, listen to the voice of God. Don't listen to the voice of the world. Let your wind drive you to Jesus. Let your pain drive you to Jesus. Let your trouble drive you to focus on Jesus. Not on the trouble, not on the problem, not on the conflict. Let your crisis, let your stress drive you to Jesus. Is your stress, is your trouble driving you to Jesus or something else? Let us think about it this morning. If you want to endure and withstand, no matter how hard the wind comes, oh, I'm going to fix my eyes on Jesus. Dear friend, not only Jesus has power to calm your situation, calm your heart. Is your heart troubled? Are you disturbed this morning? 
I want to tell you that just open your heart and say, Lord, I want to experience your calmness in my heart. I want to experience calmness in my relationship with my spouse. I want to experience calmness, Lord, in my relationship with my father, in my relationship with my mother. Lord, there is absolutely no calmness. There is absolutely no calmness in our home. Lord, we need you, Lord. We are going to, as husband and wife, we are going to turn our focus not on this, but on Christ. Do you know the reason? He has not only has power, He cares for you. Do you know that? He cares for you. This is our God. This is our God. Sister, God knows He cares for you. When you feel that you are alone, going through this storm, I want to encourage you. I want to tell you that He cares for you. What is against you this morning? What is against you? What is against your family? What is against your children? What is against your business? What is against your work? What is against your ministry? What is against you? Remember, Jesus notices our struggles. And Jesus pays every attention to every detail of your life. Are you going through fatigue and frustration? Jesus cares for you. And Jesus has power to calm your situation. Are you discreet this morning? I want to tell you that when you put God's word into practice, when you turn your focus from your trouble to him, he comes. He comes to you. I can give you so many examples from my life. How God came. And this morning, even you can tell your testimony this morning. This is how how. God came to my rescue. He is my helper. He is my helper. Are you discouraged this morning? Are you sick this morning? Are you tired of life this morning? Are you worn out physically, spiritually, emotionally? I want to tell you that Jesus cares for you. Now turn to the person and say, Jesus cares for you. Jesus cares for you. Never forget Never forget, not only Jesus has power, power to change your situation, change your life, transform your mind. He cares for you. And he comes to us. When we come to him this morning, our MMF led that song. And I come, you come, Lord. Amazing. He comes and intervenes. At your moment of despair. He comes and intervenes. At, at your moment of fear. Moment of loneliness. What is God? I'm closing. What is God saying to all of us this morning? Through our winds. He says. Put my word. Into practice. Let us hear the voice of God. The Lord says, put my word into your wind. Focus on my greatness. Don't focus on the wind outside. I will come to you. And this is the promise. John chapter 14 verse 18. The Lord says, I will not leave you as orphans in your storm. I will not. Daughter, son, little children, the Lord says, I will not leave you as often. I will come to you. I will intervene. Would you ready to put your trust in me? Would you ready to make this commitment that you will put my word into practice? Would you make a commitment to focus on my greatness? Not the greatness of your wind. Not the greatness of your problem. God is bigger than all our troubles. Could you all stand with me? Let us close our eyes. 
let us close our eyes. It is time to talk to God. What kind of wind you are facing, my dear friends? What kind of wind blowing in your life? God wants to bless you with his peace and calmness. Make a commitment this morning to put God's word into practice. Whenever the wind beats you, beats your family, the wind cannot harm you when you put, your, put God's word into practice. Make a commitment. It is up to you. Dear friend, it is a choice that we need to make this morning, whether we are going to focus on God or something else. It is time to say, Lord, you have blessed me, Lord. You have strengthened me, Lord. You have intervened in my life so many times. I will not allow my mind to be fixed on anything else but on you, Christ Jesus. Here I am. I want you to calm my situation, calm my heart. There is disturbance in my heart, Lord. Remove this disturbance. There is disturbance in my family. There is disturbance in the life of my son, daughter, someone. Lord, remove that. I'm going to use your word, Lord. I'm going to apply your word. I will not neglect your word. Every day, Lord, I will read your word and apply. I will meditate on your word and apply. Lord, here I am. Here I am. I surrender everything to you. Help me to focus on your greatness, your majesty, your power, your outstretched arms. Not on the greatness of my trouble. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. I pray for everyone. Thank you, Master. Help us not to panic like the disciples. Help us not to doubt your power. It is our human tendency, Lord, to be afraid, to be discouraged, to be disheartened, to be depressed. This morning you have revived our souls, Lord. You have revived our spirit. Help us to build our lives on the foundation, the word of God. In Jesus' name.